Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Dr. Hanisha Khemani and I'm the consultant gastroenterologist from Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center, Karachi. Today I'm here to present my research paper on pulmonary hepatic failure, the etiology, clinical manifestations, and outcome, an experience of tertiary care hospital of Karachi, Pakistan. Pulmonary hepatic failure, a term given to the acute liver injury causing sudden deterioration of hepatic function and encephalopathy within 8 weeks of appearance of first symptom in a patient having no prior liver disease. There are many etiologies which include viruses, drugs, vascular diseases, pregnancy and other. The viruses include hepatitis A virus, hepatitis E virus, hepatitis B virus, less frequently cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus, varicera zoster virus and dengue. When we talk about the drugs and toxin, it includes paracetamol, anti-tuberculosis drug, chemotherapy, statins and many more. Vascular diseases include the Bud-Carey syndrome and hypo hypoxic hep hepatitis. Pregnancy related diseases include the preeclamptic liver disease and HELP syndrome. Other diseases which are rare but include Wilson disease, autoimmune hepatitis and so on. The objective of our study is to determine the etiology, clinical manifestations and outcome of fulminant hepatic failure. The study has been started since January 2019 to the date and in the Department of Gastroenterology, Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center, Karachi and it is a cross-sectional study. Patient who give the informed concern and the patient with the age greater than or equal to 12 years and those with the, to with the total bilirubin greater than 5, INR greater than 1.5 with encephalopathy or ascites were included in our study, while those with, uh, who refused to give the informed concern and with the age of less than 12 years with chronic liver disease and other malignancies were excluded from our study. The methods which were used for the assessment are, were all patients of both genders greater than or equal to 12 years were acuted and investigated for acute virus serology, complete blood count, liver function tests, renal function tests, serum creatinine, ANA profile, serum ceruloplasmin, and 24 hour urinary copper levels. Moreover, the ultrasound whole abdominal, ultrasound with adopter study, bile acid levels, mild, mild score parameters, and King's College criteria parameters were also calculated. The total of 69 patients have been included in this study up to the then and this is the ongoing study. So well the results showed. When we talk about the symptoms, the most common symptom with which the patients presented were jaundice followed by nausea and vomiting, fatigue, abdominal pain and fever. Around 63% of the patient that is 43 patients were male and 37% of the patient that were 26 were female. When we uh, look for the marital status of the patient, 55% were married and 45% that is 32 patients were single. The causes of liver disease, when we uh, looked at the causes, the most common cause of fulminant hepatic failure in our study was hepatitis E virus that is around 51% of the patient, 35 patients, followed by hepatitis A virus in 43% of the patient that is 31 patients and intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, autoimmune hepatitis, and preeclampsia. When we look for the comorbidity status, uh, comorbid status, so around 2% of the patients were hypertensive, while 98% had no known comorbidity. The socioeconomic status uh, included around 58% of the patients were belonging to the low socioeconomic status, while 42% of the patients were belonging to the middle socioeconomic status. Our patients were mostly presented with the grade 3 encephalopathy, that is 79% of the patient, followed by grade 4 encephalopathy, around 11% of the patients. All patients who needed the ventilatory supports were around 77% and 23% of patients recovered without ventilatory support. The King's College criteria included 23 patients met the King's College criteria out of 69, whereas 35 patients died. Presence of viral hepatitis E, serum creatinine greater than 2.5 mg per deciliter and sepsis were found to be associated with a high mortality rate. Only serum creatinine more than 2.5 mg per deciliter and development of sepsis were found to predict the outcome after multivariate analysis. The outcome included 12% uh, uh, of the patient that 8 patients died while 61 patient that is 88% of the patients survived. When we look for the mortality, the factors which were associated with the mortality were sepsis, 
followed by most common was sepsis that that was followed by hepatorenal syndrome gi bleed and vent associated vent associated uh, aspiration pneumonia so the conclusion of the study included the mortality rate of pulmonary hepatic failure is very high which can be reduced to some extent in a non liver transplant areas by controlling the risk factors associated with the poor outcome we highly recommend all child bearing age group women to get vaccinated for hepatitis e virus the fda approved vaccine which include hev 239 hecolin to prevent the cause by encouraging the encouraging the population to improve the hygiene and use the boiled water prevention of by prevention of fecal oral transmission of hepatitis e virus thank you